So Apno is criticizing this $3,000 for the increase in old age pension for this year. In 2014, the, when the last year of the PPP government, the old age pension was $13,125. But they were um, thrown out, they were treated like garbage. That's why I brought that Harijan term, that they felt like they didn't, that they were like untouchables. You know, in India, you, you really can't mix with, with the higher classes, new people, father, well, that's all BS in America. That doesn't exist. So get out your mind in America. You want to live like that, go back, go back to India. Our old age pension now, as low as it is, is higher than the wages of workers, monthly wages, in some parts of the world. Manu Skrimti, Manu is the guy who codified this, this religion. Religion, Hindu religion is nothing but rules and regulations to keep the races separate. Okay. So Manu, they call that he is the lawgiver of the Hindu religion. He says, Brahma, as I told you, he is the creator, has intended from eternity that the untouchable should be born slaves and live as slaves and die as slaves. What the Europeans did to the Indian is to deal with the Varna system or the color system and told them after they conquered them, these are the Brahmins who always walk around with the orange in there. They are essentially, um, Ashk they, are, they are from the Khazar and Ashkenazi tribal area of the Caucasoid Mountains. I want to say thank you to all the supporters of the channel and for the 92% of the brand new viewers that come through and you hit the subscription button yet hit the subscribe button buddy the content is only gonna get better moving forward I gonna wait thanks they understand second-class citizens then they say rich and powerful Guyanese and they don't depend on anybody for a cent they don't ask anybody for, for, for nothing and we must respect them and that is beginning to happen if you notice they put little guyana and now they call it big guyana when here president ali came here we command respect we demand it and they have to respect it because nobody built this here this was a random community from the italians that we built up and we might be proud of it and i'm proud to say i've been there for over 40 years probably uh many of them passed through my office green cards and uh and citizenship i'm proud to know what i've done i act politically man, but I rose again to show them that you know they're, they're not gonna validate me they're not gonna dictate to me my life is what my life is gonna be my faith will will stand and carry me through and thank God and thank uh, Lord Rama it has carried me so far so so good well I'm glad that you clear that up first because like I said when it comes to stuff like this I've never been a part of it because the thing that I that I dislike about this Richmond Hill nobody speaks out nobody stands up Mm -hmm. People just, people got platforms and don't say nothing. Yeah. But I don't yes. understand what's, what, what, what's the job that they're really doing. Then when the big truck come for all of them, then they're going to say, you know, I should have listened to Baldio, you know. That, that, that man, I should have listened to him. Now I've got, you know. They're too proud to learn, some of them. They think money's all. You got to bend, you got to have lived the American dream. Um, and then they, they, they figure out, well, you know, what do I have to worry about? not knowing that uncle sam is always watching us and therefore the american dream is the ability to protect those under and after you to leave a legacy like i have done that you don't do this you watch your back with this because it's the same very people you help Rhonda. they're the first people going to pull you down or testify against you with the same contestants they will so when it's Sophina starts fly around the place they're gonna All start screaming. Are you running and testified because they said, Me now I'm jail. They're right. And they're gonna right. <laughs> say that even if they gotta thank somebody, you know, Trump, two lawyers actually took guilty pleas to testify against him. So let that be a lesson that when the SA hits the fan, run away, they only run to you when you can help them. So I'm trying to avoid this before it's too late. I figure that someone listening to me, if um, Lakshmi is listening or if... Uh, Give me one second. Guys, stop calling my phone. I'm on the live. If y'all see me on the on the live, 
you cannot call me call me or send these questions in wait till after yes continue albert so you know diwali must be run by an interim committee um and uh, people can volunteer their time i can help in some way i don't want pay i don't want a recognition if you feel i'm i'm, I'm from the untouchables or i'm a harijan then fine exclude me but all i'm saying as a district leader i'm here to provide guidance i'm here to help and i'm here to offer my knowledge don't do you think that people should support that protest that i'm hearing about well, people have a right to protest in this country and they protested over less. And you know what? If Diwali is so close to people and their hearts, the whole symbol, the whole message of Diwali and how it's been handled in the past, that people have a closeness to the whole concept of triumph over, of, and the spring, it's like, you know, getting into the new year, it's a new year for Hindus. That is our culture, that is our heritage. And it's part of all of us. So you're right, yes. I think that people have the right to protest. I heard somebody saying, well, my cops are going to come and lock you up or my boyfriend with the precinct. That's all rubbish. You cannot, no cop can supervene the Peaceful Constitution. Peaceful protest, that's it. Peaceful protest, which can sometimes get loud as long as you're not burning and, and bashing people. And the next thing you got a whole set of protests saying, and I'm a thief, and I'm a this, and I'm a that, and I, I did this, and I opened up my, you know, you don't need that. So what I am saying is that the money and the headache is not worth it. They should um, just lie low for a while. People have actually complained to me how they were excluded, how they were. Um, I won't. I don't think they were saying they were sexually abused, but they were um, thrown out. They were treated like garbage. That's why I brought that Harijan term that they felt like they didn't. That they were like untouchables. You know, in India, you you really can't mix with, with the higher classes. New people far away. Well, that's all BS in America. That doesn't exist. So get out your mind in America. You want to live like that? Go back. Go back to India. So that doesn't appear in, in America. In, in America, America is equal. Everybody is equal. Um, the, the 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 butcher is equal to the the taxi driver, uh, as like my father was, and it's equal to the lawyer, as equal to the doctor that is chipping came. We're all equal. One love. Welcome back to the channel. Now, we have a couple of speakers in this video, so. If you're trying to get a particular part that you want to see right away, go into the comments. We have everything pinned with the headline. So now you could click to the headline that interests you most or watch the whole thing. And let me get you this whole conversation. Let me get a good understanding. Because right now, we, we're moving beyond. We're moving beyond the colonized mindset. We're the ones. We're going to be the generation that's going to move in wisdom because we're going to understand all of these things, all of these hurdles that was placed before us and we're going to be able to make a judgment and a wise decision, a decision of love, a decision to move forward, a decision to understand that there's somebody pitting us against each other. There's somebody that has colonized the minds. Come on, where do you think you live? You live in a country, right? What's a country, ultimately? It seems like the Honorable Albert Baldio might have, from listening to this conversation right here, between him and Miss Rhonda Bob, right? From listening to this conversation here, it seems like the Honorable Albert Baldio might have experienced this type of situation before in the past. Right? And it seemed like this type of situation and this type of thing where persons are treated like a Hari John or an untouchable is a thing that is still present and still relevant in the society that we call Guyana. Right? And how is that right? How is that real? How does that make sense? There's a mindset. There's a colonization, there's a mind control going on here. And we got to see it because if you don't see the core of a matter, if you don't deal with the fulcrum, then how are you going to deal with the vehicle? The vehicle can't move without the fulcrum, right? The vehicle can't move without the fulcrum. Without the fulcrum, the vehicle is stagnant. It can't move without the circle on the wheel. 
without the circle on the wheel, you're going nowhere. And the mindset, we're going to get directly into that because we're going to get the information from Dr. Anamali and we're going to hear his conversation. He's going to read directly from the script for us so that we can really understand this caste system, this colonized mind control that happened to our brothers and our sisters before they even came to these so-called shores that we call Guyana. This is stuff that happened to their foreparents in India and that happened to our foreparents in India because we are all one people. When you understand it, because Ethiopia and India are the same thing because India used to be called Ethiopia. It's the same people. There's someone pitting us against each other and benefiting from the top. Then we are going to be the generation, the true generation of change, the generation of love. Manu Skrimti. Manu is the guy who codified this, this religion. Religion, Hindu religion is nothing but rules and regulations to keep the races separate. Okay. So Manu, they call that he is the lawgiver of the Hindu religion. He says, Brahma, as I told you, he is the creator, has intended from eternity that the untouchables should be born slaves and live as slaves and die as slaves. This is, I'm quoting. I'm not coming, uh, coming up with, the reason I'm reading, because I don't want to misread it. I want to quote exactly what it says. Slavery is in, inborn among the Shudras. In the Shudras, the, the last within the caste system. Shudra is inborn among, and slavery is inborn among Shudras, and no one can free them from it. No one can free it because he is born. And, that, and then he is in the compartment where there is no entrance and no exit. A Shudra is a born slave. Food gets polluted by the smell of a pig, by the looks of a dog, and the touch of a shudra. And he is not really simply saying the food is polluted by the touch of a shudra, but he is comparing him with pigs and dogs. This is written two, three thousand years back. I didn't expect that people could be that evil. Obviously they were. A Shudra shall, shall always serve the Brahmins to live in this world and to benefit in the next world. Remember I told you? You do your service politely, obediently. There's a possibility you will be rewarded in the next life. So this is what they tell you. So you do an excellent job being a slave. Not a, 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 a disgruntled, uh, uh, um, unsatisfied, but you enjoy. Yes, Master, I want to love, I want to serve you. <laughs> because, because I'm going to be a superman in next life. A Shudra have, who, have, who behaves contrary to the injunctions of the Vedas and Smritis, which is Vedas and Smritis are the scriptures shall born as a ghost to eat head lies. How sick these people can be? I mean, how, what kind of imagination is this? So when, when this is told to an untouchable, he's scared the hell out of himself already, working as a slave, working as an untouchable. And if you tell this guy, his next life, you're going to be, you're going to be a ghost, he, goes, he is going to try his damn best to be an excellent slave. And that is what, this is, and this is called, what's called Hindu religion. If anyone has any, any kind of doubt, I want them to hear this, what religion is. And they haven't left women alone anyway. No religion left women alone. To kill women, 
and, and non Brahmins is not a sin. Here, as I was telling earlier, the dwellings of untouchables shall be outside the village. And their wealth shall be dogs and donkeys. Their dress shall be the garments of the dead and they shall eat their food from broken dishes. Black iron shall be their ornaments and they must wander from place to place. This is the holy scripture we are talking about. We are not talking about some kind of a pornographic material. Let's come to Bhagavad Gita, supposed to be the holy book of Hindu religion. Anybody heard about it? Now I want to tell you how go holy this book is. Shaturvarnya is another name for Varna caste system. Has been created by me. Me my means God. Service is the natural action of the Shudras. Here service means serving the Patri caste. It is glory to die in the observance of one's dharma, dharma meaning your caste duty, but dharma of others, the caste duty of others is a horror. So you better not try to learn somebody else. So they have done it in such a way, you do what you're supposed to do, faithfully. Wow, what do you think about what Dr. Vilu Anamali just read and what he just presented, the scholarship that he just left on record for us to see and the experiences that he spoke on, that he experienced himself while growing up as a child in India, in Ethiopia, in Africa, right? What do you think about this? Can you really confirm that this situation is not one that we're experiencing in Guyana right now? Is this a situation that is trickling into our society presently because of what might have been the case of old? Does what Dr. Vinu, what Dr. Vilu talking about make any sense right now? Is it really a thing Wow, what do you think about what Dr. Vilu Anamali just read and what he just presented, the scholarship that he just left on record for us to see and the experiences that he spoke on, that he experienced himself while growing up as a child in India, in Ethiopia, in Africa, right? What do you think about this? Can you really confirm that this situation is not one that we're experiencing in Guyana right now? Is this a situation that is trickling into our society presently because of what might have been the case of old? Does what Dr. Vinu, what Dr. Vilu talking about make any sense right now? Is it really a thing for real, might this be the thing that's holding back the real power that one Guyana, one unified Guyana could really present? Might this be the thing that's keeping us separated? What do you guys think? Let's have a conversation about this in the comment section. Let's have a real conversation about it. And let's get into the esoteric understanding, the occult understanding. The conversation that most of us might not hear in most places, but not because they never hear about it, mean the information in exists and mean that the information is not scholarly. But let's get into this right now. Let's hear what Dr. Phil Valentine, the scholar, Dr. Phil Valentine. Google that. 
see the information that pops up. Let's get into what he has to say right now about the esoterics, the occult understanding about the caste system. What the Europeans did to the Indian is to deal with the Varna system or the color system and told them after they conquered them, these are the Brahmins who always walk around with the orange in there. They are essentially, um, Ashk they, are, they are from the Khazar and uh, Ashkenazi tribal area of the Caucasoid Mountains. They're the same. They conquered the black um, Mohenjo-Doro uh, people, the Harappan people of India and pushed them further south. So the true Indians are really black, coal black, and came out of Kush. So what they 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 had a thing about karma, knowing that there is, for every action there's a reaction, mm -hmm. and when that reaction comes back to you, you are feeding the universe with purpose. Mm -hmm. So the, the universe runs on purpose. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you are purposefully doing something like causing somebody else misery you're going outside of the balance that the creator created you to cause mm -hmm. because you are the creator folded over onto itself to be greater than itself within this realm you are here to spiritualize matter mm -hmm. if you are here caught up in matter then you are here <clears throat> fighting for something that's temporal and finite. What is infinite is love. Right. I want to say thank you to all the supporters of the channel. And for the 92% of the brand new viewers that come through. And you ain't hit the subscription button yet. Hit the subscribe button, buddy. The content is only going to get better moving forward. I'm going to wait. Thanks. Instead, if you had your earning in the 90s over 75 Ghana dollars, you were excluded from getting old age pension because there was a means test as to who qualified for old age pension. The PPP removed the means test so that every Ghanaian who attain a certain age. <coughs> can benefit from old age pension. That's the first point. Old age pension is not a salary. It was designed to, it's not contributory. There is a contributory pension when people work, they make payments like the NIS, and then they get a pension, an NIS pension, which is a contributory pension. In this case, every citizen of our country over a certain age gets the pension, old age pension. Many countries in the world, particularly in the developing world and developed world, do not have this feature. They don't get that. Our old age pension now, as low as it is, is higher than the wages of workers monthly wages in some parts of the world in some parts of the world old age pension is designed um, to support not to replace support income levels for elderly people who you would assume would have had savings or getting a contributory pension. So that's, that's the idea. So APNU is criticizing this $3,000 for the increase in old age pension for this year. In 2014, the, when the last year of the PPP government, the old age pension was $13,125. In five years of APNU, it went to $20,500. So that's an increase in the five years of $7,375. If you divide that by five, 
a person got an increase. The old age pensioners got an increase of 1,475 Guyana dollars per year. $1,475. That is APNU's track record of giving an increase, average increase, on old age pension of $1,475. Imagine they're criticizing $3,000, but I'm going to get to that in a moment. This was in the context of a massive increase in taxes. They increase the tax on water. They put the VAT on water, on electricity, on data, on food stuff. They also remove the water subsidy that the pensioners had under the PPP, and they remove the electricity subsidy. So not only did they give the pensioners a $1,475 increase in their pension on average per year but they removed the water and the electricity subsidy effectively negating even that that sum that they got because i'm sure you were paying one thousand more than that in electricity bill and water subsidy so what did we say we said in our manifesto we want a double old age pension. We have increased it so far by 75%. So those who are talking about 3,000 now need to understand that old age pension has increased by 15,500 since the PPP got into office. Nearly double the amount that APNU had just over $7,375 in the five years. We have more than double the increase that they had since then. Secondly, we made it clear that by next year, so you can predict what the, what the, the old age pension next year will be because it was 25 and we promised to double it. So it's 36,000 now, it will go to 41,000 next year that consistent with our manifesto promise that we made. Now, what does the 3,000, how much the 3,000, if you multiply $3,000 by 76,000 people by 12 months in the year, it gives you $2.7 billion that the pensioners are getting now more than last year. But if you, if you take um, the, what they will get next year or what it's costing us so far it's costing us already 14.1 billion dollars more per year than 2020 because that is how much we have increased it by by increasing it by 13,000 in fact not, not 13,000 15,500 dollars per month more since 2020 it's costing now 14.1 billion dollars more so you have to look at the total promise not the individual year the promise was to double old age pension in five years did this ppp government has it been keeping its promise so everybody gone now oh i see I shown the whole opposition in this. Oh, it's only 3,000 this year. They forget that we said we'll double it. We moved it from 25, and now it's 36, and it will get to 41 by 2025. We fulfill our promise to the pensioners. APNU had said they would double old age pension in their manifesto in 100 days in 2015. They fail to double it. In fact, they just gave people a 1,475 Guyana dollars increase per year. And this is the party that now criticizes us for giving too little to the pensioners. Apart from that, we have restored the water subsidy. 
We have restored the electricity subsidy to the pensioners this year. We're going to restore that. So water electricity subsidy to pensioners have been restored. We have given directly to the pensioners in cash grant nearly 75 uh, in, in, in every year. 2021, they got a cash grant. 2022 and 2023. Outside of the pension, equivalent to another four months of, of pension on the APNU. So our record on pension payments, this is a big item in the budget, and you have to be careful about it, and we are measured. We're not going to, to, to increase it by a, a sum that we can sustain in the long run. But we, we are keeping our promise. And our promise was to double old age pension in five years. APNU did not fulfill their promise. So when they talk about $3,000 now, I see this. It's pure nonsense because we have, they don't look at what has happened since we got into office and what, what we promised. And, and the other. We keep it neutral on this channel. We not for one side or for the other side. We for the benefit and the moving forward and for the good living and for the experiences that everybody want to have in their lives in that beautiful place that we call Guyana. Now, if those things that Dr. Jack Dio was just saying, if some of them is on paper historical facts. How could that be good? And how could that be anything becoming for persons to be afflicting on others when given the privilege to have the authority over them? Now, a lot of persons are gonna say a lot of things but it's the facts that matter. It's the historical truths that matter. And we're sticking to the center point on that. We're sticking to the neutral pole. We ain't going from one side or the next side. We ain't got no preference. We want to deal with what actually happened. And as the doctor just presented, as Dr. Jagdio just spoke on, right? As the vice president just said, and proved with his information and his facts that he came with that look, we kept our promise. We kept our promise. Now, what do you guys think? Let's have a conversation about this in the comment section. We're giving Jackie Jackie. Is these things that was mentioned actually so? Let's have a conversation about it. And was the promise kept from your perspective? 